Okay. Okay. Thanks everyone for attending here. Um, we will show you, oh, a lot of echo. Uh, we will show you today how to configure your OpenStack installation using open source components to charge your users. So basically, we will talk about Gnocchi and CloudKitty. Um, this is the point that we will address today. Um, we will start by a quick presentation of who we are. We are six people here today to ex explain you to that. Um, we will explain you the infrastructure that you will use. Uh, some USB keys are being given to you right now. You can keep the USB keys at the end of the talk. Um, we will describe the various tools that we will use. And of course, we will start installing them and configure them. So we will start by configuring uh, Gnocchi, then CloudKitty, and then we'll use them really to define the pricing policy and to insert some data. So we'll see how to do that. And uh, there will be, a, we hope, some time for questions. Um, who are we? Um, uh, this is just the alphabetical order. So the first one will be Stéphane Albert from Objective Lib, who is right here. Raise your hand. <laughs> uh, <coughs> He's the PTL and co-founder of CloudKitty. Um, the second one will be Franck Berthelou from Objective 2. She's uh, at the end of the room. She's giving away. She's a giving away UZP right now. Uh, Julien Danjou from Red Hat will be here. He's the PTA of telemetry and uh, also the father of Gnocchi. Um, myself, Christophe Sautier, I'm the CEO of Objective Lib and the co father also of CloudKitty. Uh, Brice Prinel, who is right here at the middle of the room, giving a USB key to, is uh, an open stack expert and uh, from Objective Lib 2. And uh, finally, Maximiliano Vesnesio from Nubelu, uh, who's a technical expert for Gnocchi and CloudKitty and the coupling of those tools. I uh, will give a talk tomorrow about that, uh, but we'll talk about uh, a bit later. Um, what is on the key you got? Um, the key you just received contains two images, uh, one for using with KVM and one for using with VirtualBox. Uh, actually, you might be using that also on VMware. Um, it's a CentOS, a CentOS image using um, many RPMs from RDO. The root user is uh, OpenStack. Uh, the, the password for the root user is OpenStack. <coughs> sorry. And also, I'm really, really sorry because I'm French. And wh when I built this image, I didn't notice that uh, I did that using a French layer. So my keyboard is Azerty. Uh, so you'll have a bit to do a bit some effort to log in because as you can notice, there's an A inside OpenStack. So you have to find that. Okay, so once you do that, you'll be able to, to log in and to change the, the local to, by instance, uh, load keys uh, US. But we'll be here to help you about that. Um, what's in the image? Um, we thought it was not really necessary to install a wall open stack on the USB key. It would be a huge USB key to use. It would be quite large and quite annoying to launch from your laptops. So we said, okay, what are the key components that we might have? So we have a database already configured. We also have a RabbitMQ on it. We have a, a Memcached server. And we also have a keystone which is installed and bootstrapped with one user called admin. And the password associated is admin. You also have uh, one tenant called admin2. Um, on the USB keys, you also have all the slides that I'm giving here, right here. So you can follow that on the slides too from the USB keys directly. It would be easier to copy paste. Um, so copy, you will have to start copying the images that you have on the USB keys because otherwise it would be so slow. Um, once you're starting your images, please give them at least two gigabytes of RAM, because otherwise you have some issues. Um, two things. Um, 
when you're launching your virtual machine, please do some redirection of ports because it would be so much easier to use uh, your SSH client instead of typing everything using a console. So here is the line to launch using KVM your uh, image um, and to redirect ports, uh, both the SSH port and the HTTP port. So um, the idea for that will be to SSH to your local host on the 10.0.22 port, it will be redi redirected to your guest image uh, on the SSH port, for instance. Um, if you want to do that on VirtualBox, you can just click on settings, network settings, and port forwarding, and it will be straight away using the interface. Um, if you have any issues, please raise your hand, and so that we'll be able to assist you. For instance, if right now you have some issues uh, launching the, VM, the virtual machine, please raise your hand and so that uh, we can help you. Uh, Greece, France, and all the others, I mean, we may be helping people, yeah. So keep your hands uh, in, the, in the air if you have some issues to launch them so that we can help you for, for that. Okay. Um, there are a few things that we noticed this morning because we did a, a small rehearsal this morning, of course, at the last time, but since we are just uh, on various parts of the world, it was easier to do that this morning. So you also have on the USB key a directory named missing parts. So please uh, copy that to your um, virtual machine using that uh, command line here. Uh, so we just copy the world directory on the virtual machine, and we hope uh, it will be enough. We're quite confident. Uh, does anyone have still issues launching the virtual machine? Please raise your hand. Uh, there are a few of them. Yep. Uh, we, will give you all, we will give you enough time to do all the manipulation during the this end on. I don't know if, you're, if some of you have already did this kind of thing on previous OpenStack Summit, but usually um, on various end on like that, people don't talk all the time and we wait for you to do the various manipulation. Um, after that, you should be able to log in. I will wait a bit before you'll be able to continue this point. Please keep your hand in the air if you have any issue to be connected. I, I'm really sorry, we don't, I, I don't know if there has been enough USB key or not, but we didn't know in advance the number of, key, of people who, that will be attending this session. So we, Dutch, we just brought 40 kids, I think. We thought it might be enough. Apparently, it's not the case. Sorry for that. If you just enter right now, uh, please raise your hand so that we might be able to help you and to give you the information and things like that.
If you have any issue with the password, uh, I remind you, it is OpenStack, but uh, I'm French, I'm using a, a French keyboard, so you might have to change the A with a Q. Does anyone still have some issues to be connected? Okay. Please raise your hand so that I can uh, come to help you. And that right now, you can just. Okay, so for everyone having troubles with uh, VirtualBox, we've got the, um, the dialogue here. So you need to set your um, network type to NAT. 
And then there is a, a button on the bottom, which is uh, port forwarding. It's in French, but I'm pretty sure it's port forwarding uh, in English. And you need to click on this button, and then you can set the rules uh, for the port forwarding. So basically, uh, you'll have two rules. One which is uh, 10, uh, 10022 on port 22. And as we, uh, yeah, I don't know if we can. I don't know if we, if we can zoom in. Is it better now? Uh, is everyone okay, or do, do some people need some help still? Okay, good, good. <coughs> I, I'll, I'll come, come to check. Okay, so apparently um, we should be okay right now for at almost anyone. So let's continue. Okay, so the first thing we will do is that uh, we will get the right credentials for using our OpenStack, which is clearly just a keystone right now. Um, so on the root directory, you have a, a small script called ad admin.sh that you can source, and it will give you the right credentials to, to use uh, on your OpenStack. So source, do the first command here, and then you are able to manipulate keystone. So that's what we are doing here. We start by creating a project called service, like all the time. Um, and that's it for the seconding, setting up of our infrastructure. So right now, we'll start to talk about the various components we're about to use, and uh, Julien is about to talk to you about Cilometer and Gnocchi. Uh, okay. Uh, so uh, I guess everyone knows Cilometer by now. It's uh, the um, 
OpenStack project we started uh, a few years ago to collect the usage in, um, in OpenStack in general. So it's being used there to um, collect data from OpenStack, and we put them into New Yorkie to, um, to have data to build for. Um, everything in Cinemeter now is has been moved to New Yorkie for storage. We don't use Cinemeter anymore. I mean, it's not the way it's recommended to use because it's, it feels too slow. Uh, this one. Um, so there's various parts of Cinometer. Uh, now that we split in several projects, uh, let's leave Cinometer with the API, which is the API server, which is less and less used now since we don't use it to retrieve the information anymore. Um, the collector uh, is used to uh, receive only AMQT messages that are generated by the um, agents, which uh, collects the uh, information. So there are two types of uh, agents. One doing polling, which are the central compute agents. They pull information regularly from uh, Nova, Glance, Cinder, Neutron, whatever. And there's another agent, which is the notification agent, which receives, receives notifications from uh, various services, such as Nova, Neutron, etc., which sends regular information to feed data into Cinemeter, like usage of I.O., uh, CPU, et cetera. Um, so there are metrics uh, that are used, uh, uh, generated by Cinometer, which are, for example, CPU util for the uh, CPU usage of the VM, the number of bytes or packets read on the network, on the disk, and uh, everything is pushed um, from Cinometer to uh, New Key in this setup. And different type of metrics, uh, which are kind of important to, to, to know about because they're not being used the same way, uh, for example, when you do billing. Uh, gauge, which are absolute value, like uh, temperature in a room or something. And cumulative and delta, which are uh, counters that keep increased, like uh, network IO, for example, which uh, is always um, being increased and never, sometimes go back to zero, but is not an absolute value. The sample styles are uh, the base of, uh, the basis of Cinometer, so everything we do generate in Cinometer are call, is called samples. So we generate samples uh, each time we uh, meter something in Cinometer, and we send it to the collector, which then stores it into uh, New Key. Uh, in a sample, you have a lot of information, the date, the name of the resource that is being metered, uh, the user, the projects, uh, some metadata about it, uh, things like that. Um, we hit a few scalability issues a few years ago when designing Cinometer. Uh, that's why we started in Yoki. Um, so the API provided by Cinometer uh, until version two, it was very slow because the way we stored the data, uh, all the samples uh, generated by the uh, Cinometer components were stored as is in uh, either MongoDB or an SQL database, and it was very slow because it was a lot of data. Uh, most samples were um, are regenerating information and storing uh, information in duplicate over and over again, which is very handy because it's very detailed. So if you want to do things like auditing, it's, it's pretty, I mean, it gives you great power, but it's a lot of data to, to, to store and to retrieve. So when you do requests, for example, on the Cinemeter API, it's often pretty slow because, uh, because the metadata are replicated over and over on all samples, and you can't index them because everything is really free from. That's more the fault of OpenStack components in general, which don't have any kind of schema of their metadata of their resources. So it's, it didn't work, so we changed our approach. So we approached in Yoki uh, two years ago, uh, which started on, under what used to be the Cinemeter program, which is now called Telemetry. That's why you start seeing telemetry everywhere because we know of different projects, which is not only Cinemeter. Uh, so Nuki is one of its of these projects, um, and the idea behind Nuki is to implement the time series database, which is scalable, uh, in a position of many time series which are not. Uh, so this one is scalable. It can use storage, uh, which are scalable, such as Swift or Ceph, to store the data, which is uh, known to be scalable. Um, 
and it's being used by Cinemeter as its storage for its samples. So it does pre-aggregation of the data. So when you use NeonKey, you say, okay, I'm going to need um, the metrics to be stored for a month, a year, and being aggregated in um, some granularity, like I want data to be stored for every hour over a year, or every second over a month, things like that. You define these kind of archive policies in NeonKey, and it's then being used to compute the data as you feed NeonKey with uh, new metrics. So it's way faster to store to compute is way smaller too, and it's very much uh, very more efficient to uh, query when you want to re retrieve anything from your key. It takes very very little time. Uh, there's a few concepts in your key that you may want to know about, which is the archive policy I just talked about. So that's the number of samples you want to keep for a matrix. So you define a policy um, saying I want to keep a one second granularity over a month one day, granularity over a year, whatever you want. You can specify multiple definitions of uh, that in our archive policy. And you can use that, one of the archive policy, for each metric you want in your key. And it's going to be used as you feed data into uh, the system. Uh, new case in two parts. So there's a part for the metric storage, which is a file system like in this workshop, or uh, Ceph or Swift if you want more scalable systems. And there's another part, which is the indexer, which is being used to index the um, data, uh, sensor, such as the uh, instances uh, that are uh, being run, things like that, uh, the listing of resources for volumes, uh, instant, um, volumes, uh, networks, uh, et cetera. All the resources from OpenStack are being indexed here in the indexer, which is either uh, Postgres, MySQL, whatever is supported by OpenStack, and which are modeled where they are not Freeform anymore, so there is a schema with everything you need to know about the resources and all that are described, which is very handy to, for example, general invoices uh, based on this data. So Cloud Kitty, what's next? Yeah. So I will talk quickly. Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Uh, I'll talk quickly about Cloud Kitty or it's working. So you will have a, uh, you'll know how it's working when we will be doing all the configuration. So it's a pretty new project. Uh, it was integrated in the Big Tent. Uh, the first release uh, from the Big Tent is in Metaka. Uh, <coughs> and it's all Python, like every, every component of OpenStack. And we can integrate data from Stereometer and Yoki. So if you have uh, uh, an old metric pipeline only using Stereometer, we can query Stereometer API. And if you're using Yoki, we can query Yoki and get the data from Yoki. And we can even, uh, yeah, we can store data back in Yoki. So you can um, get data from Yoki, store data in Yoki, and do all your calculation in Yoki and have only one API. Yeah, and it's super modular. So every part of CloudKitty is, is basically a driver or a module. So you can create your own, own um, collection driver, uh, your uh, storage driver. Uh, if you need to integrate with uh, another uh, identity uh, framework, for example, if you don't want to use Keystone, you can use uh, create your own module and I don't know, fetch data from a database, for example, to get all the tenants you want to uh, apply rating on. <coughs> yeah. And uh, the biggest part of Cloud Kitty for is pricing. It's rating, uh, rating and pricing policy. So you can add as many modules as you want. So if you have some particular uh, rating rules that you want to create a piece of code to uh, apply on, on the data collected for, uh, from Nyoki, for example, you can create your own module, load it in Cloud Kitty. It's um, in runtime, so you can you don't need to re, uh, restart Cloud Kitty. The module will be loaded, and you enable it and configure it on the fly. And all the configuration is sent back to every uh, processing uh, services, so you you never have inconsistent data in your in your pop, in your pipeline. So. Um, all the work we'll do uh, today is on the HMAP module. There is two modules at the moment in CloudKitty. It's HMAP and FileScript. 
Um, PyScript, basically, you create your own Python code, send it to CloudKitty, and you can process your data using your own Python code. Uh, HashMap is more of a high-level framework, so you can create rating rule and hyper name on your data without um, uh, writing a single line of Python code. So basically, uh, we have a way to model our data. So we create group. Uh, we can group calculation. So a group is a group of calculation. For example, if you want to match some metadata and some volume uh, to some calculation, you create a group. So for example, uh, instance of time, if you want to do calculation based on the instance of time, and you m place all your rating rules inside, and you can do um, uh, a volume pricing with discounts, and it will not uh, interfere with your uh, uptime calculation. Uh, there is a service mapping, so it's, um, it's the same name as you, you will find in Keystone, so compute network, network etc. <coughs> so you match the service. For example, you want to create, we'll see uh, in detail later when we will create the rating rule, but uh, you want to apply calculation on the compute service of OpenStack, you create a mapping on, on the compute service, and then you can even uh, apply uh, a rating rule based on the volume, so for example, uh, the number of instances you've got in Nova, or you can match some field, so it's a field mapping, and then you can match the metadata uh, of your instance. So for example, uh, you want to create a rating rule and you want to uh, uh, charge your user based on the instance of time and uh, apply some specific calculation based on the flavor of the, of the instance the user created. So you will create a, a service mapping on compute and then you will create a, a field mapping on the flavor ID set the flavor ID and all the calculation will be made uh, based on this. And then you can create a threshold. So threshold is the same logic as I said, except you can uh, create multiple levels and it's really useful when you want to apply, ch uh, when you want to charge your users for volume, for example, or network IO, because you want to apply some discount, for example, um, uh, Let's say if, if you create a volume that is bigger than one, uh, 100 gigabyte, you get a discount of 5%. Then you can create a threshold and say uh, when you go past 100 uh, gigabyte, you get uh, you apply a rate on your on your uh, calculation and you get a discount. Okay, so um, we'll start the installation now and we will install uh, Gnocchi first. So you will install on the components. Um, so Gnocchi will be basically uh, collecting data and storing data back. And then we will install uh, CloudKitty on top of this and do uh, all our rating rules. If you want to, I guess it's not really, no. <coughs> so um, we will first install all the demons of uh, Gnocchi so uh, take care about the command. Uh, as you can see, there is a, a capital C in the options. Uh, it's to use the local cache of your image. So if you don't uh, put the capital C, you will fetch all the packages from the internet. So it might be a little bit longer. Uh, so don't forget to put the uh, capital C. And basically, we'll be installing the Gnocchi API, uh, Carbonara, uh, and the indexer for SQL Alchemy. I don't know, uh, did everyone type the command or copy paste it in, in your SSH station? Yeah? <laughs> I guess I will, I will go on the slide, I will um, go uh, with all the slide about Gnocchi and I will stop later and see if everyone is uh, maybe a little bit late on the configuration. And then we will install the client, so it's pretty simple. Uh, it's a Python Gnocchi client, so we can, um, insert data later. We have a small script that will be uh, inserting data in Gnocchi because clearly we can wait for uh, one or two hours that we have some instances uh, pushing data in Gnocchi. <coughs> I guess, yeah, we can. So um, we will insert data using a script. Uh, now that we have uh, our demons and client, we want to uh, reference them in Keystone so every component uh, will see them. 
So I will go on all the comments and we will wait till, uh, at the end. So we create a service. So basically uh, we create the metric service. We name it Gnocchi because we want to see uh, uh, what's the name of the service uh, giving us metric in case maybe we have different services later. <coughs> uh, about the output on the bottom, uh, you will not have the same, we'll, uh, not the ID at least. But it's the example of what you're supposed to get when you're running the command. Uh, when we are creating the service, we will um, attach the endpoint to the service. So basically, uh, when you do a request on Keystone, you fetch all the services and you get information for the service and you get uh, the endpoint, so it's the uh, entry, entry to your service, so which URL your, your, you are supposed to, to uh, make request, request to. So three endpoints, same URL, uh, so it's basically the same command. You need to change the ID. Uh, with the ID you get on the first uh, return. So when you create the service, you will get an ID. You copy your ID and you paste it just after region one on the second line. So it's the ID of uh, the new key service. And basically same command three times, except you change the type of um, Uh, endpoint, so you have internal endpoint, admin endpoint, and public endpoint, depending on where you're doing the uh, request. So same command. Okay, so it was uh, endpoint configuration of Gnocchi, and then you need to create users. So Gnocchi, uh, when you're inter interfacing Gnocchi with Keystone, uh, which is not the default configuration, uh, you need to uh, validate the token from the user. So you need to create a Gnocchi user and give it uh, admin rights so we can uh, go tell to Keystone and uh, validate your token and uh, validate your authentication in the OpenStack Cloud. So you create a new user in the project service. We create the project uh, on the first slide. Uh, it's um, a project we create and where we put all the service users for every component of OpenStack. And then, yeah, we create a uh, Gnocchi user with password, password. And lastly, uh, we add the admin role to Gnocchi. So um, we need to uh, uh, put Gnocchi as an admin because we need to validate tokens uh, to Keystone. <coughs> so that's all for the Keystone configuration. When you're set with it, uh, we need to store data for our indexing part, so uh, to connect uh, the files with um, the information. So again, copy paste, you can copy paste the command as you see them. Uh, basically, we're creating a new database, Gnocchi, and we are um, creating a user and giving rights uh, to the Gnocchi database so we can uh, set it on, a, on Gnocchi configuration. And you got the, um, the MySQL root password on the bottom. Uh, again, for the guy uh, uh, that didn't change uh, the layout of your cable, a keyboard, if you're in Azure T, don't forget that A is Q, et cetera, and vice versa. Uh, okay, just a quick look at the configuration, so you're not copying, uh, copy pasting uh, a file without uh, knowing what you're doing. Uh, you don't need to put all the lines by yourself. Uh, you've got the configuration file on the USB key, so you can SCP it on the, on the machine, or if you don't have SCP, or you don't know to SCP it, you can uh, go in SSH, modify the file, and copy paste what you've got in your machine to your, to your remote machine. Uh, you, we are uh, enabling uh, debugging because we might want to see what's going on uh, inside when we are trying to see um, some people might do mistake of configuration and you, you want to enable debug so you, you see clearly what's the problem with the configuration and it will save us time, basically. Uh, Indexer is a, uh, a connection URL, so you're referencing the, um, the configuration you made before on the MySQL database and um, yeah, it's what's used for the indexer to uh, related to file you're creating, even if it's safe, 
uh, Swift on the file, uh, file backend. Uh, storage, so yeah, as I said, uh, we are using the file backend because we don't want to create a self cluster. At least I don't think you want to run it on your laptop at the moment. And the base URL, uh, so it's, it's a default configuration. By default, you, you have a driver file and the file base, 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 base path as you're seeing, but we showed it in, uh, in the slide because you might want to see what's going on uh, inside. Yeah? Uh, it's, the queue is eight. Okay, and uh, last part you need to modify, it's in the APA uh, paste.ene uh, in the Gnocchi configuration. Uh, by default, Gnocchi is not uh, um, bound to OpenStack, so you can use it out, outside, outside of OpenStack. So you don't have any authentication by default in Gnocchi. What we're doing is enabling uh, the pipelines that will do uh, uh, the auth authentication in Keystone. So you will have to authenticate in Keystone, have a token, and then you can talk to Nyoki. So what we're doing here is enabling Keystone integration and Keystone validation in Nyoki. Okay. And, um, Updating database, so like every, every component, uh, when you're using a database, uh, you need to apply some migration to create the tables and um, do all the upgrades uh, if you have an already existing uh, database. So here we are typing uh, gnocchi uh, dash, uh, in English it's better, uh, gnocchi dash upgrade, and you will apply all the database mi migration. And lastly, when you've got your configuration set, your, uh, your database ready, uh, you can restart the, the Gnocchi service, so you can um, do some queries on your API and start to uh, store data, etc. Does anyone have uh, any question about about um, Gnocchi configuration, maybe? Um, with every component in OpenStack, you need to define different endpoints. Um, it already has, uh, it uh, always uh, has been like that. Um, because you, you, you sometimes you want to um, have different uh, IP address and networking. For example, if you want all your admin traffic to be on a separate uh, network so people can see what's going on on the admin API. And then you've got the public one and the internal. Internal basically is enter component and public is for the public communication. But most, most of the time, uh, all components will query the public API. Yeah. Uh, so the question is, uh, some uh, can, uh, do some people use CloudKitty on the public API to do some requests? Yeah, sure. Um, <coughs> So you've got uh, token validation and you, we apply a role, so you can't uh, configure uh, CloudKitty if you are not an admin, for example, but uh, you, can, uh, uh, you can use the storage API, for example, so um, we've got ways of creating reports and accessing the data stored in CloudKitty. So user might want to um, get a report of what, what's the current uh, total for the current month, for example. Uh, or they want to uh, access data for the past two months, and you've got an API for that. Um, one thing we have, uh, if you're using Gnocchi, Silometer, or every other uh, driver you can think, you've got a common API. So if you uh, use Silometer and Gnocchi at the same time, and storing data in CloudKitty, because we have a, a storage driver, uh, we have Gnocchi and our own custom storage driver, you can use the same API and you will get the data uh, and it's not depending on the storage driver. For example, when you're using Gnocchi and uh, you're using our storage API, basically 
you, um, CloudKitty is, is doing all the requests to the Nuke API without Nuke knowing. So you don't need to uh, learn how to use all the API of OpenStack component. You only learn CloudKitty, you configure CloudKitty, and you do requests on the storage API, and, and, uh, and you're set. Okay, I'll go ahead and talk to you about CloudKitty and then we can have um, a little time to see um, if everyone is, is uh, on, the same, on the same step. So CloudKitty, again, we are installing a server component, less component than uh, Gnocchi. So you have uh, two components uh, in RDO, it's API and processors. <coughs> processor, so basically API is all the requests from every user and you can uh, configure uh, CloudKitty directly from the API. So you uh, configure one time uh, your configuration file and all the configuration of CloudKitty is made on the API, not on the configuration file. And uh, when you're um, adding a new server in CloudKitty, you don't need to do some tricky stuff in the configuration file. All the configuration is sent directly to the CloudKitty processor on the fly. And then there is a processor. Uh, the processor is doing all the calculations. So basically, you can set your API process on your front server and um, have the processor uh, on some um, big machines, for example, because you need to, uh, to do a lot of calculation. And then uh, all the um, calculation is done on the processor. So if, if a, um, a customer wants to, uh, yeah, so. If some customer want to uh, have a quote, yeah. for, uh, it's something you, you can do in CloudKitty, so sometimes, okay, it's n I guess it's not working. Plan B. Um, yeah, so um, <coughs> all the calculation and all your data will be on the processor, so you can have, um, if one of your API node is corrupted, uh, um, you won't expose data um, to the attacker. And every, every request for calculation, for example, on the API, you can request for calculation. If you want to uh, launch an instance, you can send a request to CloudKitty with the instance description and ask for a price, and you will get a price of what it should be costing to your user, and it's sent directly uh, with uh, RPC uh, to the processor. The processor is doing the calculation and sending it, sending it back to, to your API node. So no data is uh, handled directly on the API, so you can, um, uh, you won't, you won't risk of expo exposing data uh, of other customers uh, if you have uh, 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 some problems on, on your API node. Okay, so I... <laughs> okay, uh, so there is a, a small part missing. Uh, you need to install... Um, so th there are the missing parts like Christoph said earlier. Um, you can install it with Yum, but it's not cached on the image. So in case we don't have internet, uh, we put it on the USB key. So you need to install the package by hand. Uh, but before installing the CloudKitty dashboard, you need to install the OpenStack dashboard, which is Horizon. Uh, so you need to type quite the same command, except when you're uh, setting the, the, the file at the, at the end, you need to set OpenStack-dashboard. You will see it, it's in the missing part, and you will have Horizon installed, and then you can set up a CloudKitty dashboard, which does uh, all the integration uh, in Horizon. So you can configure CloudKitty directly in Horizon,
actually it's my fault, so I will just uh, fix it. Um, you know, sometimes in, you realize that you have something twice on your script or whatever you want. That's what happened this morning with the installation of Horizon. So I said, okay, uh, let's remove it. But uh, once I've removed it, I have removed it twice too. So we don't have um, we don't have the installation of uh, clock of um, Horizon. So you will have to type big. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'll have to do right now. I just want it to be a little uh, big. So before typing, before typing the uh, RPM uh, command here, you just have to type this. I'm sorry, it's not on the, it is not on the slide already, uh, but at the end you'll see that you have uh, all our email address and um, just drop me an email and I send you an updated version of the slide. Is it enough? So it basically just install the OpenStack dashboard from the cache that you have on your USB key. And once you have done that, you can install the Cloudkey clients. Okay, so again, as before, we need to configure Keystone, so same, st same thing as uh, with Gnocchi. Uh, we create, um, yeah, at this side. Uh, we create a new service called CloudKitty, uh, type rating, because we're, uh, we're doing rating, so we are playing calculation on data to um, uh, get more data, but with calculation, and then we can uh, put it back in the billing system and apply VAT and all the accounting. Uh, same stuff, I'll, I won't uh, stay long on this slide. Uh, we are doing the same thing as um, with Gnocchi, except the port in the is, is not the same one, it's uh, 8888, which is a problem with all the components that are using the same, but we will find a way to change it. Uh, and then we create a new role, so um, I will explain that. We're creating a role rating because uh, when you want to charge your uh, customers, sometimes you have um, tenants that you don't want to apply rating on. So when we want to mark a tenant or a project as uh, we want to do rating on it, we are applying a rating role for CloudTT in the tenant. So when CloudTT starts, we have a tenant feature, we call it, and it uh, asks Keystone uh, which tenant has the rating role for CloudKT and then CloudKitty process all the data of all the, the tenants having the rating role. So again, uh, we need to validate uh, Keystone tokens for the API. So we're creating a CloudKitty user and uh, adding uh, CloudKitty to the service uh, tenant with the admin rights. Same thing as Gnocchi, uh, we create a database and add rights uh, for the CloudKitty user and now the configuration. <coughs> so more lines than uh, Gnocchi, but not that much, uh, actually. Uh, again, we enable debu debug, but because if you have some troubles, we want to see what's going on uh, inside. Uh, KS uh, auth uh, is a um, uh, Keystone auth section, so we create only one section with all the Keystone information, and we reference it in all the, um, the um, the parts needing Keystone information, so we, you don't have uh, two, three, or four times the, the same data in your new file. <coughs> so it's it's a, it's a, the, the OS plugin of, of Keystone. So we are using uh, Keystone V3. Uh, you can uh, use v, V2 if you want. Uh, V3, V2. Uh, the tenant feature can use uh, V2 and, and V3 too. 
and we're referencing the data we created before, so our cloud TC user with the password password in the tenant service. And then we are referencing the data in the Keystone host token to validate token on the API when you want to um, validate that a, a user is uh, connected to, uh, to your OpenStack cloud and is um, uh, valid. Uh, RabbitMQ, because we were using RabbitMQ to send messages between API and processor. And then database, because you want to store your data when you're finished. And we are storing the configuration, uh, some configuration of CloudKitty is stored in the database, so all the um, hash map rating rules that I talked before is stored in the database. That w that's why you don't need to modify a configuration file, because uh, we don't want to have a rating rule in the configuration file because if, if some, some people from sales of our, or accounting is, want to create rating rules, you have a, an interface in, in uh, Horizon and you can easily give them access to the Horizon interface and they can uh, create rating rules and you don't want to give access to your servers uh, to your uh, marketing or sales, I guess. Uh, that's why you can create everything on the uh, API and the uh, Horizon interface, and everything is distributed on the processors and API nodes. And when when you're doing a, um, a configuration modification on your API, uh, it triggers a message that is sent to all the processors. So basically, the configuration is only loaded uh, when the calculation are done. So you don't have inconsistent uh, calculations because your configuration change between uh, two calculation. Okay, so no um, other components of Open uh, Cloud Kitty. Like I said, it's all decomposed in different components. So you've got the storage. We're using a Gnocchi hybrid. Uh, we plan of havi uh, having a Gnocchi full support. Not th know that we can create a resource dynamically with the API. We can uh, get data from other components in OpenStack, create resource in Gnocchi dynamically and insert them. Uh, at the moment of the, um, when we created the driver, it wasn't not in Yoki, so we we created uh, some hybrid solution that do uh, referencing uh, of the Yoki resource, and then we we store all the data that we can store in uh, in Yoki in uh, Cloud Kitty. So you only have a small footprint uh, because you're not storing all the data. All the data is still in Yoki. Uh, then you've got your collect session, so it's where you want to, uh, uh, where you set uh, the, st the driver. So collector uh, is Gnocchi, so you want to get data from Gnocchi. You can uh, set multiple collectors if you want to. Uh, if you want to get data from Silometer and Gnocchi, or if you created your own driver and you want to fetch data. For example, if you've got some specific information that are um, related to some customers and you want to apply rating rules based on what's in Silometer, what's in Yoki, and some specific rules, you can do it. Um, and so uh, for the Yoki collector, clearly you need to have access to Keystone to authenticate to Yoki. So we are referencing the same uh, auth section as uh, before. Uh, tenant fetcher, as I said, is a way to um, connect to OpenStack, but if you want to run uh, CloudKitty outside of OpenStack, you can. Uh, you just create your own tenant feature, and then um, you will not be using Keystone, and you can use uh, your, a database, for example, to fetch information. Uh, and so in the Keystone feature, uh, fetcher, uh, we set the host section, as before, and then we set the version we want to use to query all the data. Okay, it's log. Uh, don't worry about what's in the button. Uh, when we are all set, we can uh, create the database. So basically, uh, it's Cloud Kitty DB Sync upgrade. So you create all the tables and all the data you need. And then uh, it can look a little bit tricky, but we init the storage. So we have a command that is Cloud Kitty storage init. We're doing migration on the database, but the idea is what if you're using Ceph? or Swift, you might not do migration on, on the database, so we init the database for all the configuration and the database for the, uh, and the storage, so it can be uh, different. 
Okay, and then you need to have a, a working cloud kitty to do this, so maybe I will wait a few minutes.
If you face, um, when you try to type clock kitty, um, the module list of clock kitty, which is the command uh, on the left, if you face uh, max retry uh, something, uh, just restart the clock kitty API service because um, sometimes it's not really reloaded correctly after changing everything.
Uh, okay, so we are nearly uh, out of time, so I will rush uh, through the last slides and uh, explain you what it's doing. Uh, sadly, we will uh, not be able to create some rating rules. Um, so uh, if you want to have any information, make sure to uh, uh, bump it to me in the summit and ask me a question. Uh, and we will uh, create um, a blog post maybe on uh, Objective-Lib website. So with the updated slides, uh, new images with <laughs> uh, less quirks. So you can uh, try it again. Uh, and again, if, if you have any question, don't hesitate to uh, ask me uh, anything. So just uh, uh, about the f uh, last slide, um, you will have a, a nice demo uh, in uh, like two minutes because we are out of time. Uh, someone will show you uh, what they're doing with uh, Cloud Kitty and Yoki in their infra uh, infrastructures and um, what you can do with it. Uh, basically, what the last slide were is uh, how to list all the rating modules. So Cloud Kitty module list, you're, rate, uh, you're listing the rating modules. Uh, you've got HashMap, uh, NoHop, and PyScripts. Uh, NoHop is a dummy uh, rating modules. It just ensures that the data is uh, formatted like it's supposed to be. PyScripts uh, enables you to create Python scripts and do a uh, rating in Python. And HashMap, you model your rating rules uh, using some kind of objects. And you get a rating calculation. <coughs> uh, OK. So I guess the, the line got eaten uh, during the de generation. Uh, you're doing Cloud Kitty module enable HashMap, and you're enable enabling the HashMap module, but it's not in the slide. We'll update it and give it to you later. And uh, I guess we, uh, we're, we were resetting the um, uh, information in Cloud Kitty database to be sure that we reprocess all the data and do the calculation based on all the, the new uh, rating, uh, rating policies. But it will be not be the case here. Um, so um, I guess I will leave Max showing you uh, his demo of what he's got in his company. And again, if, if you need some information, don't hesitate. Come and ask, ask us. Okay, so um, we will have a big imagination right now, and we will suppose that we have Cloud Kitty running and Gnocchi, and we have also an architecture with say low iterations that are pushing metrics into both systems. And then we, we will have an, an horizon, uh, a dashboard to, to uh, manage our cloud, and we will see what, what we can do with all these services. So th this is a little bit different dashboard. It's our dashboard, but uh, had some changes in the front end and the user experience. But it's based in a vanilla dashboard, so you, be, you will be able to do this in your own dashboard. So we will go to the rating part, um, the rules uh, section. So. That we, ha that we have here are uh, billing rules that will be based on, on rules that you are pushing into, uh, from Sailometer into the Gnocchi system, okay? So uh, when Sailometer push the data into uh, Gnocchi, you will have samples. But you then have to create some uh, billing rules that are based in uh, business rules, okay? So to do that, I will disable the uh, rating module to uh, avoid some inconsistencies. 
then I will create, create a new rule, and there we, you, you have all the metrics that are uh, pushed into your Nuoki system, okay? So you have to select one of these metrics and then create a business rule to start, the, to, start to collect that metric and start the, uh, to create a bill line item. So uh, in this case, I will select this device right, bytes, sorry. I will select the uh, billing unit, in this case it's gigabytes, and the, uh, the uh, aggregation function, okay? So I will manage the rules, I will create the new rule, and I will put here the cost. Okay, so once the rule is created, as you can see there, you have the cost per the summarize of the amount of gigabytes per hour, okay? So that's a, a business rule, okay? Perfect. So you have created another kind of this uh, business rule, like the thresholds or the metadata rules, but we will just try with this, a flat rule. Um, then we are, we are going to the to uh, show back part and we will generate a new report based on that rules, okay? So um, just, we will just create a new report, perfect. So we have all the metrics again uh, that we uh, push it into the Nioki system and that we uh, use to create this kind of uh, business rule and build line items. So now we will choose these metrics to generate a report, a billing report. In this, in this uh, case, we will use instance, that, that is the metric for instance uptime. Then we will choose the granularity, that it's the, like the resolution of the metric, and the time span, that is the, the time that you will, uh, will, will we uh, store the metric. In this case, seven days, and with a granularity of one day. So each, each day you will have a point with the cost of the entire day for seven days, okay? That, that's the, the result. And then we will group that metrics, okay? So uh, in this case, we, we will show the instant sub time all from all our cloud, but we will divide the report in project ID, then uh, flavor ID, and then instance ID. So we will have three different levels in which we will have the, the value of each, each one of the, uh, of the levels. So you can filter uh, in a specific flavor or in a specific uh, project if you want. So once, once the report is created, you can show the report. In this case, I have uh, another one created that is, uh, it has more metrics. In this case, as you can see, you have um, the granularity that it's in, in this case 30 days, uh, it's, it's one month, with three months of time, time span. So you can go through uh, the, the three months and you can see the total cost of that month. Okay, in this case, we are showing uh, March, the, the m uh, month of March, and you have the total cost uh, over there that it's uh, 75,000 dollars or in the, in the currency that you want. And then you have the partial cost of every one of the projects that you have in your cloud, okay? The admin project, migration test project, all that, all that are different projects that you have and you have the partial cost of every project. And then if you sp uh, split down, you, you can uh, see the partial of the flavors. And if you go deeper, you will see the partial of the instances because we, we choose three different uh, agrupation levels, okay? Then you can go al also uh, to, the, to the previous month, okay? And you can see also the, uh, the total cost of the month, the total cost of every one of the projects and the flavors and the instance at the same time. So um, 
one thing that you can do with, th with this kind of report is to export the report to be uh, imported by, for example, your billing system or uh, in a PDF uh, format or uh, you can import the report uh, with, a, with an Excel, for example. So you can export the report and download and you can import it uh, in, in with some application in, in a CSV that supports the CSV format. Okay, and an another thing that you can do is to create the creation of charts that are the same of the reports, but in a graphic manner, okay? So we will create a chart. The chart definition, it's uh, like, uh, it's, it's similar. You have to add a name for the chart. You have to select the metric in which the chart will be based. In this case, we will select the disk write bytes. So we will select the metric again. Then you have to choose the granularity and the time span. The same that, that you have chosen in your report. Then an aggrupation. In this case, we will, we will select just one level of aggrupations because our graphics, and so it's really difficult to, if, if you choose more than one uh, level of aggrupations. And then we will create the, the chart. So once we have uh, several charts created, we can create as, as we call the dashboards. That are, that are collections of these uh, charts. So uh, we will create a new dashboard and we, we can select if the dashboard will be seen by a, a user or by an administrator, for example. Then we, we, we will add a, uh, a group of charts. We'll, we will select uh, several of these to, to have a, a big dashboard. And the dashboard is like a template. So once you, you select the charts and you add the charts into the dashboard, you can uh, scale up, scale down the, the graphics, and reorder the graphics in, in, in the way you want, okay? So you, you can show things like CPU delta or uh, the, the, cost, uh, uh, the cost of, the, of all the, the month in your cloud by flavor, by project, etc. And the graphics are, are also uh, interactive graphics, so you can, you can select and deselect uh, some report or uh, some flavor to, to have a better uh, vision of what, what's happening in your cloud. So this kind of dashboard are, are dashboards to, to show you uh, or to show other um, departments, maybe commercial departments, how the cloud is being used and how, how they are spending their money, okay? Perfect. So we will save this. And you, you can have a, several, a list of charts, several uh, dashboards, sorry, with different kind of graphics there. And another thing that you can, th that you can do with this is to set a dashboard as a home of uh, the users, okay? So every user, when, when logging into the cloud, can see that dashboard, the dashboard that you want that the user see, okay? So for example, you can show the user how is they uh, spending their money in the cloud, uh, how much instance they have, how, how the instances are divided in, in terms of flavors or projects, etc. Okay, so that's all. I would just conclude. Um, so j first of all, thanks to everyone here to attend that. Um, like you notice, we haven't been able to finish, but like I said to I think almost anyone here, just drop, drop me an email to Christophe. You have my email on, your, on the slides. And I, I'd be really, really happy to help you, uh, each, each other, to help you uh, one at a time, <laughs> one, one by one. Uh, to finish that this week, so that I can explain you how to use CloudKitty right and, and Yoki right now that we have 
installed them. Uh, what you just seen with Maximiliano is um, their implementation of uh, CloudKitty and Yoki. Um, and he will be really happy that you join uh, the talk that he's giving tomorrow at noon. So tomorrow at noon, he's explaining, and Stefan, they are explaining together more in detail what they did in uh, Nubelu to use CloudKitty and Yoki and why they did that. And so he'd be happy to explain you everything like this. Okay. Thanks a lot, everyone.